um, you say that you've now um, reformed the way within which you're working, um, now working with groups such as Kilium and trying to work with Muslims um, in particular. Um, but my question to you is, why six or seven years ago did you not think that the way to tackle these issues then would be to sit down and talk with Muslims or within a, a, a liberal democracy to lobby your government for the way that your government is um, for example, in acting in foreign policy um, and um, the Western involvement in the Middle East that is um, perpetuating extremism. Um, instead, you chose to take to the streets and to lead a racist, fascist organization um, and to you know, continue to confound Islamophobia. Um, but now you've had this change of heart. So why, why not do that seven years ago and what's changed? Uh, you talk about reform yourself and have a change of heart. Who wanted to talk to me six years ago? Five years ago? Six who wanted to talk to us? As I've told you, we tried to talk to our council. No one wanted to sit down and talk to us. And sort of a bit of a myth is that I've changed what I'm saying. And uh, I wasn't open to dialogue anyway. I was. I mean, I mean, imams I've met over the years, whilst leading the English Defence League. Well, one meeting nearly got me killed when because uh, I met with the imam from Dewsbury. He came down to see me four days before the English Defence League demonstration. Remember, this is a demonstration where Muslims plan to blow everyone up with bombs. But I've been open for dialogue and you're asking what's changed. You said a fascist and racist organisation as well. It's, um, and you also mentioned Islamophobia. I think quite a lot of the things we fear are rational. I think they are rational. Because a, a phobia is an irrational fear. So I don't think it's right to just, again, brandish people who have genuine concerns and fears as being Islamophobic. Um, Yep. Um, and I mean, I have several tweets here just from two years ago that you said something. Um, I just saw someone planting a time bomb, or as a Muslim woman involved called it, having a baby. You also said, I walked into a library and asked for a book on rape, genocide, and killing, and they handed me the Quran. So these are, these are very generalized, you know, statements yeah. about the whole of Islam, about people who follow Islam. <coughs> There's no separation there between radical Islam and. You know, uh, and you, uh, Yep. Yeah, I'll, I'll, yeah, anyone can. <laughs> anyone can Photoshop a tweet, as, it, as happens many times. I get told I've said this, I've said that, and many of times it's the first time I've heard it. That's four years ago. That's four years ago, is it? Four years ago. Ending in uh, when you. I wasn't on. Now, well, I wasn't on Twitter four years. I wasn't on Twitter four years ago. Yeah. When I said that's Islam. What we now use is the frame Islamist, which is someone's interpretation of Islam, which they wish to enforce on society. That's his Islam. Yeah? That group, ISIS, which is what these men are supporters of, that's their Islam. Yeah? It is their Islam. You better have argue, arguing with them about why it's their Islam. I don't know why it is, but you see, Smack in the face like that. Just Google Tommy Robinson beating up, you'll find picture after picture of my face rearranged. It happens quite a lot. Yeah? The vast majority of Muslims, again, that I meet, don't smack me in the face. But there is an issue, there is a problem. It's a problem that you should be able to talk freely about, or at least oppose about everyone wanting to kill you. Yeah? Six Osman warnings I've had, so is my wife. She's had Osman warnings when she was pregnant, telling her that people were planning to kill her. We're in Britain, land of freedom and democracy. We should feel free to oppose, say, stand up against anything we want to. You want to shout me down? You want to slander me? You want to call me saying? Fine. All we see is violence. It's all I see. It's not all I see, because the vast majority of Muslims who come up to me, I've had many Muslims stop me in the street and say that they feel they're the religion's been hijacked. You can date this back, which is when I go back to this Muslim recently, who I'm meeting this week, and he brings it all back to the time of Abdul Wahhabi, talking about Wahhabism. Can you blame me for thinking it's representative of Islam when I live in Luton and I see the scenes you've seen? Can you, would you blame me? And when, when, the, when the imam I see on my TV 
I'll do a bit of research, I'll do a bit of digging. They opened a Discover Islam Centre in my town. Okay? A Discover Islam Centre was opened in Luton Town Centre and it was opened by Luton Borough Council. It took me 10 minutes to dig and look at Yusuf Bonner, that was his name. Yusuf Bonner was the manager of the centre. He was, this was his fifth religion, was Islam, yeah? He's been everything, even a Jedi, I think. But he's working his way through, he's obviously a nut. And he's got to, he's opening a centre in Luton Town Centre, supported by our council. On his blog, he said, Christians are wearing suicide vests of wrongful belief. We will not rest until Islam is brought into the home of every, into every home in Luton. Bearing in mind, you've seen the problems we've got. Yeah? This was only in 2012. Now, we wondered, I wondered, who was funding this centre, this dower centre that was going to be a shop in the town centre. I want to know who's funding it, because then when you find out who's funding it, you see what's going to be propagated through it. So I set up a fake profile in a Muslim name, and I began a conversation with Abdul Rahim Green, because these sort of centres have been opened in Tower Hamlets, yeah? You know, Ira, the charity. Abdul Rahim Green. So what this centre's coming to do is show us the true Islam, yeah? Because we've apparently seen the false Islam many times. We, we want to see the true Islam. So I'd straight away I just looked at, I got talking and he confirmed, yes, they are behind this centre. So then I looked online to find speeches by Abdul Rahim Green, where straight away I see a, a speech where he says, if your wife disobeys, disobeys you, take a stick and beat her. I don't want this in my town. I certainly don't want it in every home in Luton. This is not helping, yeah? And, and the Muslims I'm meeting this week are also say that this, this centre, they agree, is an extreme centre. It's got Wahhabi books in it now, yeah? Can you blame us, as a non-Muslim, as, as a Luton lad, growing up in the town? Do you blame me for thinking what I'm seeing is representative? When I do a bit of research, I do a bit of digging on anyone I've debated over the years. This is why I have a problem with a lot of the, the organisations, the mainstream organisations. I know Quilliam are hated, aren't they? Quilliam are hated. But most Muslims, call them apostates. Majority of people hate them. Majority of people, anyone that speaks out is hated. Yeah? It's not a good look, it's not beneficial for you. Um, which is why at the same time, when I, I've got to just go back, I've got to point a, a bit, when I talk about Osama, I received a terrorist warning from Al-Shabaab after the Kenyan shopping mall. And this is where I was getting called a traitor a lot. People calling me a traitor. When I left the English Defence League, obviously I had this big backlash against me. It's a difficult thing to do at the time. Now, Osama got a, Osama got a, an Osman warning. I know what it's like to get a knock on the door, sit your wife down, tell you people are going to kill you. It's not good. It certainly gets you in the doghouse anyway. <laughs> but Osama got that as well. So whilst people are calling me a traitor and they're calling them, there's Muslims that are now, lives are in danger, which many other Muslims are now calling them apostates. And if you are a moderate Muslim, you should be defending what they're saying and seeing the hard, and, and they're putting their lives and reputations on the line. But going back, do you blame me? C can you blame me with what I've showed you? And that's only a snippet, yeah? I could stand here for five hours and show you things that when you watch them, you're like, what? Why? How is this? That's what I've been like so many times. Like, what's going on? This is my town. It's where my kids are going to grow up. Can you blame us? And we, what you're seeing there, you see Stacey Dooley, it's enough to bring her to tears. That's just one incident. This is happening all the time. All the time. So, can you blame me, honestly? Can any of you blame us for having an issue with it? Can you blame us? You might be able to blame us for generalising at times against all Muslims. Do you blame us for saying what we see? And then we get told so many times it's not what we see, but we're just telling you what we see. It's not our fault. I haven't created this. I didn't create that. I didn't make them want to hate us, want the complete destruction of the West. We, are, we were, <coughs> we were a, a symptom and a reaction of the problem. Now, if we don't sit up and listen and try and solve the problem now, what's going to replace the English Defence League? It's going to be bad in years to come. So you can either address the issues now, keep burying your head in the sand, Keep ignoring it. Keep calling anyone who speaks out against it a fascist or a racist. You can keep doing that if you want, yeah? But you, if you do that, are part of the problem. Not me. It's you people that are doing that that are going to be the problem. <coughs> <coughs> Unfortunately.